This is our uh, old fashioned wet shaves. We make natural grooming products for men and organic cologne. For Lisa Brodar, co owner of the Portland General Store, natural isn't just part of her business mantra, it's a way of life. And I try to promote just my lifestyle small, local, family owned businesses buying food from farms when possible, eating locally. And she says that also means not eating food that's been genetically modified. It's not necessarily that I'm anti-GMO. It's just I don't know for sure what is in certain products that use uh, genetically modified organisms, so I avoid it. She's not alone. A lot of folks wonder about food that's been engineered by scientists in a lab. Well, I don't think, you know, we've been 100% successful in all of our endeavors in science, right? So there's some suspicion about science. But John Jemison, a researcher at the University of Maine, says a GMO is essentially any crop that's been improved over the years. And despite what many people think, they've actually been in use for many years. I guess my first time working with any of these genetically engineered crops um, was uh, about 97, 98 when we first, when some of the first varieties came out and our farmers wanted to see them, wanted to understand how to use them. One farmer who uses genetically modified seeds for some of her crops is Katie Pratt of Illinois. She also volunteers on behalf of science and engineering giant DuPont to help educate others about genetically modified seeds. We spoke to her via Skype. Why, as farmers, do we choose to plant a genetically modified seed? Because um, we've been able to do more with less. So we've seen about a reduction of about half of our use of pesticides on the farm for weed and insect control. She says that's because the genetically modified seeds are engineered to help keep away certain insects. But she says there is something the crops planted with GMO seeds can't do. There's a misnomer out there that a genetically modified seed increases yield. And really, it's about protecting the yield. Another misnomer, fruits and vegetables are bigger these days because they've been engineered that way. The strawberries you buy, and the green beans, and the onions, and you know, your, most of your produce, that's, that's not genetically modified. There's just 10 crops that are available that have a, a genetically modified hybrid or varieties available to commercial growers. Some of which include soybeans, sweet corn, canola, sugar beets, potatoes, and some varieties of apples and squash. But the problem is that most folks don't know it. People and myself probably get a little freaked out because you want to know what's in a product you're buying, specifically food. Well, Maine is one of two states in New England to require labeling for GMO crops and animals. However, the bill that was signed by Governor LePage back in 2014 will not go into effect until four other neighboring states pass similar legislation and no word on yet when that will be.